To get a Dynamics 365 field service environment, go to trials.dynamics.com and select field service. Then sign up. If you are a Microsoft partner or employee, sign in with your account. Otherwise, you can create one. First, enter basic information about you and your company. Then create a username and password. What you enter here in the URL will be the name of your field service environment. Then add a phone number for authentication purposes. And then verify your identity. In the setup options, choose if you want just the field service app or all of them. Field service is designed to work with other apps like customer service and sales, so we'll select all of these. Keep in mind, partners and employees can create an environment at demos.microsoft.com as well. After a short time, your environment will open and you'll see all the apps that are deployed. Simply select Field Service to launch it and open it in a new browser tab. Next, let's set up users for Field Service Web and Mobile. Head back to your Field Service Web environment and go to Settings, Security, and then Users. Each organization has different users and security roles that will need to be configured. But to get started with testing and development, you should designate one user as a back office dispatcher and administrator, and one as a field technician who will use the mobile app. Select the user who should be a back office administrator and make them an admin if he or she is not already. Then choose Manage Roles and give the user the field service administrator and dispatcher roles. Next, double click on the user and go to its related field security profiles and assign it the field service administrator field security profile. Technician who will use the mobile app. Then head back to users and select a user you would like to designate as a field service field technician who will have more limited security and use the field service mobile app. If a user does not exist, you can create one in the Microsoft 365 or Office 365 Admin Center. Go to Users and add a new user. Assign a name, username, and password. Give him or her the correct Dynamics 365 license that includes field service. Next, ensure you enter an address for the user. This will serve as the default location for the field technician later on when scheduling work orders. After some time, the new user will appear in your field service environment user list. Select the user and assign it the field service resource security role. Then enter the user and give it the field service resource field security profile. This is very important for proper use of the mobile app. For Dynamics 365 deployments, it is recommended to give users copies of security roles. You will also notice the address entered for your user is passed to Dynamics. If not populated, enter the latitude and longitude of that address in the scheduling section. Next, let's create a bookable resource for the field technician user. 
This will allow the user to display on the schedule board and for dispatchers to assign him or her work orders. Go to the Field Service app, then Resources, and create a new one. Set Resource Type to User and find the Field Technician user from the lookup. Then assign a name. In the Field Service section tab, set Enable for Field Service Mobile to Yes. This is required. Then in the Schedule tab, set Start and End Location to Resource Address and choose an organizational unit from the lookup. Lastly, assign your resource to a service territory. In the Related tab, choose Resource Territories and add a new related one. If you are using the Field Service Trial Experience, it is recommended to choose the Washington State Territory as it aligns with the sample data. Because we have a user and a bookable resource set up, we can test logging into the mobile app. The Dynamics 365 Field Service mobile app is a standalone mobile app purpose-built for field service scenarios. It's designed to aid technicians as they travel to various customer locations each day and complete work orders and other tasks. It features a modern and intuitive interface and offline capabilities that allow technicians to keep working and viewing job details even when there is no internet access. The app is created and maintained by Microsoft and built on Microsoft's Power Platform. This means the same admin experience to manage Field Service Web is used to manage and configure the mobile app, creating efficiency and consistency. Let's take a look at using and configuring the mobile app. First, download the app from your device's App Store. In this example, we are on an iPhone in the Apple iOS App Store. Search for Field Service Dynamics 365 and find and download the Orange app. Once it's done, launch the app and sign in with your Dynamics 365 Field Service credentials. If you have been scheduled work orders, you will see them in the Bookings tab. Next, let's show how to configure the Field Service mobile app for your business needs. When you install Field Service or upgrade to the latest version, administrators will see a new model-driven app called Field Service Mobile. The first thing you need to do is ensure the app is assigned to the security roles who need it. Select the Field Service Mobile model-driven app, select Options, and choose Manage Roles. Select the field service security roles and other roles that need access to the mobile app and the configurations that we are about to make. Now that we have our field service environment deployed and our users set up, let's go through a few initial configurations for scheduling, work orders, and the mobile app. This will help us get up and running with field service. A field service environment contains two apps, field service, which has work orders and related entities, as well as resource scheduling. First head to the resource scheduling app, then the settings section, choose administration, and then scheduling parameters. The first thing to do is connect your environment to Bing Maps. This allows for map visuals and travel time calculations. Also, set auto update booking travel to enabled if it is not already. Next, let's enable maps on forms. Go to settings, then administration, then system settings. And show Bing maps on forms. Then hit OK to save. Back in the Resource Scheduling app, select Enable Resource Scheduling for Entities. This is a list of entities you can schedule 
with the schedule board and other tools. By default, work orders are enabled for scheduling. You can choose any entity, even custom entities, to enable for scheduling. As an example, if you want to enable cases, choose the entity on the left and publish customizations. Beyond scheduling, there are a few work order configurations to get up and running with field service. Go to the field service app and then the settings section. Select field service settings at the top. Here you'll see a broad range of settings for field service. To start, you have the option to add a work order prefix and work order starting number. Keep in mind you can also use the standard dynamics numbering for work orders as well by selecting the button at the top. In the other section, it is recommended to enable auto geocoding of addresses. This means if an address is entered on a field service record, it will geocode them automatically by adding a latitude and longitude. Save, and then let's test this. Go to Accounts and create a new account. Then enter an address. As you enter an address, the system will recommend matches and then geocode whichever one you select. After geocoding, you'll see the account now has a latitude and longitude. When you create a work order and add an account to it, the work order will inherit the address and geocode. Let's test creating a work order and adding an account along with other required details like work order type. In the address section of the work order, you'll see the account's address and latitude and longitude. In the location tab, the work order address will appear on a map, and this is because we enabled Bing Maps on forms. Lastly, you can mass select accounts or work orders and geocode them. This is helpful if you're importing accounts with addresses into your environment from another system. As explored in this video, the Field Service Solution is a combination of the Field Service app and the Resource Scheduling app. Let's review how to navigate both. In the Field Service app, you are taken to the Service section by default. This is the main section and has core Field Service information like work orders, bookings, and requirements. Below that are Accounts and Contacts which are shared across other apps. Because field service is so closely tied to customer service, you can access customer service cases from field service as well. This allows customer service reps and dispatchers to coordinate. At the bottom is the asset section, which holds entities for asset management and connected field service. In the sales section is opportunity and invoicing entities, which is helpful for sales related work orders and billing. In the inventory section is where you can configure warehouses and the inventory levels. In the resource section, you can manage your field technicians and equipment. And lastly is the settings section. Here is where you can create important master data, such as work order types, incident types, and your product catalog. Next, let's head to the Resource Scheduling app. Here you'll interact with the entities that help you assign work to resources. There is also a Settings section where you can define scheduling master data. From both field service and resource scheduling, you can access the schedule board. On the schedule board, we'll see our resources or field technicians in the center, and we can filter them with the left panel. In the bottom pane is our work orders. Both resources and work orders are displayed on the map. The gear icon in the top right will display configuration settings for the board. At this point, 
the field service and scheduling apps are deployed and ready for you to configure for your specific business needs. Thank you.